Hello, Frugal fans. Once again, this is Captain Frugal, and I'm reviewing my stash to save you cash. And today, I'm reviewing Miss Marvel issue number five. All right, Frugal Force, let's jump in and look at this issue. This is issue number five of Miss Marvel. Uh, this can be purchased as a trade paperback. You can also buy it digitally. And yes, they are still back issues available of this. Uh, as much as they brag about sales, is main, majorly just a uh, marketing ploy, if you will. If you look on the sales charts I've shown on my last video, you can look at it yourself. Check some sources like Comic Crime and things like that. It's really not that great of a seller. Uh, it's just promotional, so you sh you are able to find back issues. I found at least three stores just in my local area that have it. All right. So with that, the writer is G. Willow Wilson, and the art is Adrian Alfano. Once again, uh, I mentioned in the, some of my previous videos about the art, but I will say the art's growing on me a little bit. All right, so this issue picks up right after last issue. Doyle tells her that they're in the inventor's secret stash house. Remember, Kamala went there, you know, to free her buddy Bruno's brother. Kamala tells them to let them out, but of course that's not going to happen without a fight. So Doyle shoots Kamala with a laser and hits her in the side. She discovers that she's not winning this fight, you know, so she ends up shrinking down to get out. You know, sometimes it's good just to run away and fight another day. So Kamala goes home to heal and regroup, which just is sort of nice. It keeps the character from being a Mary Sue. You know, and it shows that, you know, that's one of the things I like about rookie characters. It shows growth. Now, also, Kamala is very hungry due to the, the healing effect possibly is what's causing this and her powers. So she's eating a ton of food and falls asleep at the table. Her mother wakes her and she's very upset. But her father is able to calm her down and talks to Kamala. We then find out why she was named Kamala, which was a very nice moment in the story. Then she is told that she is still grounded and she's expected to spend more time at the mosque to gain some more perspective. We then cut to another scene. Kamala is then calling Bruno for help. Kamala tells Bruno that uh, making a costume with her powers is also distracting her and slowing her down. So she's going to need to actually make a costume because that's part of it, which is controlling that. It's actually hindering her, her abilities because she's keeping her focus on that. So she's going to need something stretchy. And if you paid attention to the previous issue, you know that just amazingly, Bruno just developed that already, which isn't that a plot device, right? A little uh, thing there just happened to make that earlier. <laughs> so we then get a training montage, which I can't help but think of the 80s playing, you know, some kind of 80s song for training in there. But Bruno developed, uh, also is developing a suit for Kamala, and, and so you see that with the development of the suit and her getting trained and working with, getting better with her powers. Next, we cut to Kamala and Bruno, and they go back to the house where Vic is prisoner. Remember, that's Bruno's brother. Kamala is is uh, ready for round two, if you will. Kamala bursts in and temporarily, temporarily takes out Doyle and is busting Vic out, and she runs off. Doyle tells her, though, that she is in big trouble, letting us know that, of course, there will be later on some retaliation. So in the very next scene, we cut to the Circle Q again, and we find that there's been a message there threatening Miss Marvel. So, you know, the stakes are getting climbing up. She's now starting to get her rogues gallery, which is nice to see some, you know, villains for her. But then we cut back to Doyle and the gang again. But this time they're at the South Bank coal plant. It's a decommissioned coal plant, of course, because, you know, bad guys love abandoned buildings. Now, Doyle then uh, talks to who appears to be in charge, which is Mr. Edison. So you were finding out that Doyle's not even the big bad. He's an underling to somebody else. But Mr. Edison looks like a big rooster. I mean, really cheesy looking. Now think about rooster male. So far this book, I have to say, you know, for a book that's supposed to be pushing for diversity and things, makes white people look stupid. And, uh, you know, a rooster, think about the male counterpart, female. It, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Could be. But it just really seems silly to me. So we see that Mr. Edison clearly sees Miss Marvel as a problem that's going to need to be addressed, which is to make, you know, like the arch villain, if you will, at this point. All right. So now that we've looked that over, let's look at some of the pros and cons of the story. 
the pros. Kamala learns that she needs to train. She's just not a Mary Sue character that can bust in and beat up anybody. And I think that's always a good thing. I love seeing that. For example, uh, a good co point to use as an example of that would be in the Thor books back when Eric Masterson was temporarily Thor. You had to see him go through the growing pains of being a new superhero. We also seen that when he went on his Thunderstrike. Uh, we, we also get more character and cast development here. The father-daughter dynamic was really well done in this issue. And Miss Marvel is getting her own rose gallery, which is nice. Rather than just having to take it about villains from other ones, she's going to get her own, even though, let's be honest, they're not that good so far. All right, so let's look at the cons. In my opinion, the art could be better. The biggest con is Mr. Edison, in my opinion, looks incredibly silly. I mean, is this a girl power thing by making the boss a rooster? I mean, come on. It's not exactly a good start for the rogues gallery. So I hope they develop this a lot better. It's not making me want to continue reading the book. So overall, considering these things, the story progression, I'm going to look at the grade. The grade for this book, as I said, with the art, the story progression, everything could be better. The villain development could be better. But it's got some good character development with the main character. Kamala really is an interesting character. Her family is a good you know, group and cast along with it, her friends as well. They do need to add some more diversity and things and showing them you know, in a proper light. Not just all white people are stupid and all men are evil kind of way. Except for you know, her pal Bruno, which is a nice, nice you know, counterpart to that. So overall, great at this book. I give it a C. Alright, thanks again for watching this review. And if you enjoyed this review, please spread the word with others and join the Frugal Force. Hit like and subscribe. If you want to see more reviews and check out our podcast as well, you can check us out at thehenchmenslounge.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Captain Frugal. So until next time, keep it frugal.